Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BJ Tech News. And on the last video, I showed you guys how to install the Hyper-V management tools within Server 2012 R2. Now today, guys, I'm going to show you how to connect to your hypervisor, which we can we did and configured on part one on this Hyper-V series. So on the taskbar, I created a nice little shortcut of my Hyper-V manager. So I'm going to click on that to start it up. And on the upper right corner, I want you guys to connect to server. Uh, click on browse and because everything is integrated inside at the directory we're able to actually type in the name of our hypervisor and check a name and it will up you know put everything as uppercase and underline it stating that it is part of the active directory and you're able to contact it let's press ok and I've seen a lot of videos or in books that a lot of people do is go to virtual switch manager and create a uh, a virtual switch I created one called BTN and I made it private. Now, like I said on the last, uh, on part one of the series, I forgot to add more network adapters to my virtual machine. But in best practice, you want to have multiple network uh, adapters because one adapter would be for management and the others would be for your virtual machines to go outside, inside, or private. But for this series, I'm going to do everything private. So let's press OK. And I'm going to right click, go to new and virtual machine. Now, where I right click, I actually right click on my hypervisor node. Once you do that, you're going to get this nice little wizard. Uh, we're going to hit next. You're going to give our machine a name. So I'm going to actually give it, uh, let's go win 702. Now, you can actually store the virtual machine on a different location. Now, from my understanding, for the Hypervisor Server 2012 R2, you can actually store your virtual machines within an SMB share. So, that's pretty awesome. Uh, if you hit Browse right now, it's actually going to start uh, navigating within your Hypervisor. But I'm going to leave everything as the default location. Hit Next. Now, you have to pick the generation out of Generation 1 or 2. By default, it picks Generation 1. I kind of prefer Generation 2 because it gives you features such as Secure Boot, SCSI Boot, and Pixie Boot using standard network adapters. But the problem is you have to at least be running Windows Server 2012 or a 64-bit of Windows 8. So I'm not going to bother with that at this video. Uh, I'm going to deal with Generation 1. Hit Next. The memory by default it gives it a 512, but you guys could increase it. And one cool thing about Hyper-V, you could use dynamic memory for this virtual machine. So I'm going to do that hit next and pick your pick your virtual switch that you created again I'm doing everything privately so I'm, I use mines hit next and uh, I'm gonna choose a size of 20 gigs only and this is where it's gonna be stored and that's gonna be the name of the VHDX file hit next and I already mounted uh, the Windows 7 32-bit operating system within my hypervisor now make sure that you mount your ISO within your hypervisor not your host where you're managing your hypervisor so we're gonna hit next hit finish and it's gonna configure itself and once it's done uh, you can actually right click connect you get a nice little window of the connection and uh, I'm gonna go to media DVD drive and I make sure that it's capturing the D from there I'm gonna hit the power button to start it up so once everything is completed, it should start up on the ISO that's mounted within the hypervisor, guys. Okay, I want you to keep mind. So it's booting up. That's a good thing. That's a great thing that it's booting up to the Windows Server. But that's about it, guys. That is how you create a virtual machine within your hypervisor. Uh, uh, that is how you connect your hypervisors inside your Hyper-V management tool. And uh, so far, that's about it. That's... <laughs> that kind of ends the video, I guess. I think on the next video, I'm going to do a little bit more of enable replication. Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit more on checkpoints. Uh, checkpoints used to be called snapshots, but they kind of changed the naming. Uh, as well as I'm going to try to do a little bit of failover clustering with you guys. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, just leave it at the bottom of the comment section. And i catch you guys on the next video. Peace out.